from getting fried, going to get crunk. Yeah. Yeah. Head back to Longview, Kelly popping trunk. Yeah. I ain't even tripping, yeah. riding and I'm sipping. Yeah. Yeah. Let me come through, four foes, steady tipping. Yeah. 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 Let me yeah. yeah. watch the trunk crack. Yeah. Yeah. Let me sit sideways, see me running back. Yeah. Maybe AP, yeah. maybe AD. Yeah. I ain't even tripping cause we some athletes. Yeah. Messing with Smitty yeah. in the summertime. Yeah. He get pissed if we don't make our time. Yeah. But we gon' get it cause we gotta finish. Yeah. Nebraska horn hustles, man, we diminish. Yeah. Put them a little, yeah. paint like a skittle. Yeah. I ain't even tripping, I ain't never double dribble. Yeah. Cause I'm a player from the Himalaya. Yeah. Let me sit sideways, man. Maybe back door, yeah. maybe fall off. Yeah. Sipping codeine cause I gotta kill the cow. Yeah. Let me sit sideways in the big bins. Oh, you boys, they my brothers, they my friends. All right, all right, welcome into Fullback You, and this is probably going to be the most casual podcast I've ever had, just because me and this guy went from arch rivals to just inseparable. I am so honored to have my brother, Louis Baker on. Lou Baker, how you feeling, brother? I'm good, man. Thanks, dude. Appreciate I give you that, the, that, that arch rival too, compliment, man. that that you're, you were the guy of your class, the only one that didn't redshirt. How about that one? And you, dude, unbelievable player coming out. I, I thought about how I was going to describe you to the fans, and I want to start with this story because I want to know how you got to OU and all that, but I want to start. There was no harder worker than Lewis Baker coming out. Like, where did this guy come from as a true freshman giving us so many problems on offense? One guy who didn't weigh 200 pounds, probably. <laughs> One. And Man, we can't block I still this don't dude. weigh 200 pounds. Do you not? <laughs> no. Let me know, uh, obviously, how you got to OU and just talk about your work ethic, things like that. But just, what you know, what kind of player you were, man? You were a good player. Man, ever since I was a kid, man, I just wanted to I wanted to play football on, on a, on, in a, at a college level because we used to actually watch, watch – uh, so I grew up in Florida, Florida State, the Florida rival, and – we was always Florida State fans, but I was like, man, one day, you know, when you're a kid, you dream, man. So it's just like, wh- whether that's what I wanted to do for sure, forever, I don't know. But as a kid, you dream, and I was like, mom, I want to be a football player. So I had, a, I had always had it in my mind, man. And I knew I was athletic, and you know, like you put the two, to, two and two together, man. And it's like, you know, what can you do? And and anyways, you, series of life, you know, events uh, landed me in in Dallas, Texas, of all places, and. And uh, an opportunity to to just you know go out there and 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 uh, I think I started playing in eighth grade, man. And uh, from there, long story, that was the first time I ever played football. I uh, they they get, they had tryouts and they're like the you know tomorrow you'll find out you got a jersey in your locker. Yeah, you don't have a jersey. If you have a jersey in your locker, you made the A team. If not, you're on the B team. And I, I remember going to school early the next day, and I didn't see the jersey in my locker, man. And from that point forward, and, and I knew I could play. It was just like you know, I just got to prove this to myself, man. And from that point forward, man, I just I, I had this drive. The reason I say that story is kind of a little bouncy, just trying to bring back the memories. But man, I just I had an unbelievable drive, man, to to achieve the things that I know I was capable of doing. You know, and it's, a, it's more of a personal thing. It never had anything to do with anybody outside of me, even though you have motivating factors. It was just, man, I like, dude, I, I remember when I was a kid, that's what I wanted to do, and I had the ability, so why not? So, you know, um, I get into high school and just uh, I had a, scenario, a series of opportunities at different positions that didn't work out, and somehow I ended up at linebacker, man, and it was just like – See ball, get ball, man. And it started from there, man. And the very first player I remember, man, I just ran through a gap like I was blitzing. That's not my assignment, man. And I tagged the running back. And you know, you had those moments in life, man, with like, like the, the trajectory of everything about what's about to happen completely changes. Now, that was that moment, man, especially for football. And I remember a coach just, I heard him just go, woo, like that, man. And that sound in that moment, how all that felt, dude, we lined up and it happened again. And then, like, you know, that was after that was the spring after my sophomore year. Going into my junior year, they moved me to linebacker, man. And that, after that, like you know, they were testing me out. And dude, I just had an unbelievable junior year in high school. Uh, senior year, I got hurt, but I mean that junior year, 
opened a huge door for me um, as far as, you know, coaches coming in, checking me out. And then, uh, you know, I was getting my first scholarship offer was from Vandy. Um, dude, I called and committed. I said, I'm going to commit. I want to come. <laughs> and they were like, because you know, my mind, that was it. I just wanted to get to the, that yeah. was the thing. Yeah. That was a really cool coach by the name of Warren Bieler, man. He's, he's a really good dude. And um, he was like, son, like, I, I can't even believe what I'm saying this, but like, I think you probably need to hold off because, <laughs> you know, That's right? Awesome. And it's like, I, mean, I, was getting, I was getting scholarship offers from mid, mid to high grade school, you know, Florida and, and, you know, Tennessee, UCLA, man, and, you know, uh, Coach Saban would come visit me and all that. And, and uh, man, dude, I just – I remember um, the summer came up after that – after that. Uh, so after my junior year, you start getting those letters in the beginning of the – in the fall time. Mm -hmm. And then, then you kind of start going on your visits. It's a whole – it's way different now, but during that time, man, that's, that's, that's how it worked. Big and deal. I remember – uh, my high school coach, uh, defensive coordinator, was was cool, Coach Venables, and he would come up and work the camps and everything. And I remember um, he was up there camping at the camp, and I, you know, again, I was getting recruited, and he was, and, but I hadn't got an offer by OU. He was looking at me and everything, and and I remember uh, he called me and he's like, "Hey, Lewis, this is like the last day of padded up camp. Is there any way you can make it up here?" You know, um, I was. Uh, I was like, Coach, man, I can't, I can't, I can't. There's no way. And he was thinking that one of my teammates from high school was up at the camp and his parents were on their way to pick him up. So he don't want you to just hop in the car with them. So I hopped in the car. It was the last day of padded camps. I was able to go take my camp, my pads and everything. And, I, man, I went to camp. Dude, I was in camp for 15 minutes, mm -hmm. literally. And they pulled me out of camp. And Coach Stoops came and Coach Venables came, man, and they offered me a scholarship, dude. And it was – it was a really cool moment, man, too, because uh, like I, I didn't know I didn't know the magnitude of the, the you know who Coach Venables was and Coach Stoops and all that, man. I just you know me, man. I'm just mm -hmm. I had I was I was being driven, man. I had what was on my mind, what I wanted to do, and and uh, but that opened up the door to like a ton of other things coming in, man. Um, the only thing I ever felt bad about that day was, man, that was a lot of those dudes had been there already. That was, that was their third day at camp, and I came in there like a stall and dog, right? I, I wasn't even thinking about that. But anyways, man, um, that's kind of – that that opened up the door for, like, now major schools are coming in. and But, man, uh, it, I narrowed it down, man. I just – I wanted to go to a place where I was focused not only just uh, on football but w with the academics and everything. So – um, it came out to to Notre Dame in OU, man, and and I took my first visit up to Notre Dame, and I was like, you know, the team is cool here, man, but it was a little cold, a little far away, and then I I remember taking my trip to to Oklahoma, I think sometime in, right when the winter started, um, right before right my senior year actually, um, so man, I got there and felt the guys, uh, Will Peoples and and Mark Clayton were my hosts, man. And, I got on campus, dude, and that was it, you know. Um, I knew it was a place that I know I could be. Um, and uh, to me, what felt the most right was not only it was a close to home, but, like, the team, man. It was like it was like family, dude. And I was like, it, it pulled me in, man, you know. Um, I, I, I tried to not do so much thinking because what do you know when you're 18 years old, right? So, and, uh, yeah, that was a place for me, man, and that's where I ended up going. I got the OU. <laughs> we got to elaborate on BB's uh, friendship, you know, the mentorship that you got. Uh, but I want to get into, man, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say something, and you know that that offense of your true freshman year set a score national scoring record. I firmly believe, and I know there's gonna be. I'm gonna tag Kevin Wilson in this video. We're still really close. You already know where I'm going with this. There was no player that challenged that offense more than Lewis Baker. There was no player who got more behind our line, two first round draft picks and an all American. There was no player that um wreaked havoc on us. And you know, I think part of it, Lou, was we underestimated you. You know, B V brings in all these linebackers, it's 240, 250. He brings in this tall guy. We like, oh, we can handle him. He ain't even to it. And before we know it, you're behind everybody. Um talk about just your true freshman year, what it was like going against that offense and what it was like maturing into the defense. Man, dude, my – so once I was able to get to OU, so this is a good transition. Once I was able to get there, man, 
I remember my older brother always saying, man, he's like, every level you go up to is going to be the same type of guys, the same type of vibes, right? And to, to progress and continue to get better because it's going to be like starting over every time, just do the same things that you were doing before plus more, right? And so in my mind, I'm just like, like the, one of the biggest reasons I came to OU is because everybody, it's a, it's a, the vibe is winning, man. People want to win, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and and if you can't hang on to what that standard is there, you know, you know what happens. People fall off and, or they, you know, they end up transferring. And it's not to knock anything. You know, things happen. People take different paths. But, man, OU stand for, stood for something, man. And that's what I was attracted to. That's why I ended up mm-hmm. going there, man. People won. And I, even if I was too, uh, under 200 pounds behind, like, all American linebackers, man, like, I was going to be, like, pushed to be my very best. And if I was already challenging myself to do that, man, you already knew I was going to put – I was pushing my own self. So I was – now I'm at this point where I'm, like, trying to push the limits of who I am, you know, and – you know, even if that means sitting behind Teddy Lane and Lance and all the other linebackers we had mm. at, a, at under 200 pounds, man, that like, and, and for Coach Venables to have wanted me to be the part Bingo. of that, man, that, like, that meant a mm-hmm. lot to me, man. And, and he, he saw something. And, you know, a lot of us that's non-football related, man, sometimes that's all we want to do is be seen and, and, and know somebody. I believe in myself regardless, right? And when somebody can see you and meet you at, at where you are, man, and sometimes that's like the most motivating thing in the world, man, because you know, you know, people see, and that's that's sometimes that's all you're doing it for, sometimes. But for me, man, again, it was being driven. But getting there, man, dude, um, I uh, it was it was like it's only switch on and switch off. And for me, it was switch on. So everything I did, you know, I did it to the you know the best I could, man. Whether it was the the competing and. Man, we got so many stories. <laughs> it was you, know, tough. That, you made that us good, summer, though, man. man. Oh, up, yeah. I was going to run up those stadiums fast. Mm-hmm. I was smoking everybody. But like, was like, we still got, like, two more hours worth of workout. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and so when I got on the hill, it's me laughing at me, just throwing a ball back and forth, doing incline, like, med ball sit-ups. And I'm like, man, we got you know, two more hours. And But he, he, I think he appreciated the effort, so I didn't get yeah. kicked out. But Ooh. I was struggling after that. But, man, yeah, dude. Um... The, in the same mindset, obviously, that's went into the into how I practice, man. How I, mm-hmm. I, I watch film and everything, and and I think uh, you know, thank God, a, a man like Coach Venables, you know, gave me a chance, man, and, and seeing what he saw in me because what he saw in me was what he thought he saw in me, I, I believe, and that was just somebody that just wouldn't be denied, man. Yeah. I knew it was bigger than me. Obviously, I'm on my goal. I have my paths where I want to get while I'm there, and so do my teammates. But at the same time, all of us collectively as one unit had that. And I would not be doing you justice and not doing you justice if I'm sitting there, like, you know, practicing half-ass, man. So True. just in everything I tried to do, man, and, and, you know, even if guys got mad at me, but I knew not to go We hated you. Go, we hated go, you. We couldn't I, stand you. We we you knew know, it. Well, this, this scout team, God, ah, Lewis. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I knew, I knew. I knew not to go hard one play and then go soft the next play and then have because I because you know that the inconsistent part can make like you know because it's a mindset like you if I'm gonna be on if I'm gonna be on you gotta be on I can't be off and to be switching it up and you gonna have speed and you miss and slip and hurt something you know because you know that's why the coaches but I was I was always you know that that what was really going on inside my mind is like I want to get these guys better. You know, if they're not going to have me over here as a backup, you know, or a starter, or you know, you know, or you know, I'm going to be getting rested and they're going to put me over here. I'm going to be over here for a purpose, man. And I want to be, I want to be noticed. I want the coaches to see me. I want them to know I'm serious. So the way they review us and grade us is through film. They can't go to our workouts. They're not with us in class. You know, they're, we're watching film with them, and they get they grade us when they go back and watch film. And I knew I just wanted to be noticed, not mm-hmm. for the sense of like, like look at this guy, well, you know, but. I'm really here for the same purposes y'all is here for, man. I want to win, man. Like, that's why I came here. So it was whatever I had to do, man, you know, and that was the mindset. You know? So, yeah, you you guys, were, it was uh, – you gave me a headache, J.D. <laughs> it was tough, though, man. You did many. You did many for us, literally. But, I mean, again, shout out to you, man, just that effort and knowledge. And, you know, I, I always got to, you know, when I say the hate, it turned into respect because you know how respect is earned there right and it's everybody nobody gives anybody respect at OU 
until you mm-hmm. go out there and physically prove yourself. And they're like, okay, Lewis is going to be something someday. Talk about that, though. Talk about how you became a guy that went from and and I want to get a BV impersonation on this while you while you do it. But talk about how you were a guy that developed into and we got closer through special teams meetings. You know, you went from this specialty type player to ending up being a captain, which I'm so proud of you for. Talk about that. Let me know how BV schooled you up, how much smarter of a football player did you come, and then let me know uh, what over nine five does, uh, which, which what your responsibility was. Oh, man, okay. You're going to take me down the road. <laughs> man, um, man, I can't give enough. You know what I mean? I'm not – I'm. you know, I, I, I ain't going to sit there and go, like, just, just sit there and just – Praising everybody like uh, you know, like everybody else does, man. He's when one of the best. People, He's a legend, though, man. He's a legend. It's legit, man. You know, he and you know what makes him a legend, man, because he's a he's passionate about what he does, dude. He he really cares, man. Every little thing of, of it, like all the nook and crannies of his life. But it wasn't just football. This mm-hmm. is a vibe, man. This is who he is, you know. So if you're gonna do it, you're gonna be the best at it. Be in that weight room. You we saw you saw how you working out by so. Uh, uh, but man, he, he, the intangibles of the type of person he is, um, he's a student to life. He pays attention. He assesses. He, he calculates. He watches. He cares. He, he takes it. He does the alchemy. And he, as much as he can have an influence, his, his whole influential circle of what he can do, like he, he, he turns into gold, man. Like, uh, you look at a guy that's a, that was a defensive coordinator, but look at the impact he had on the whole team. Why go be a head mm. coach when, when you have a, a deeper and you're, you're more rooted in the team anyways because you're around the guys like you know more individually and do the special team you know when you can do what he does he, he he's very passionate about what he does it's, it's chess you know it's, it's it's he he he'll watch a guy's pattern through the scenarios and and the situations and Watch how a guy can panic by just going to a certain place. What did, what do they do on P and ten? That's the Ooh, first play. F- fourth and short, they're a hundred percent quarterback sneak. If know, there's a if the oh, fullbacks over there, it's a hundred ninety six percent fullback. I mean, I'm just hearing that. I'm like, what in the hell? Who who did that? Who took all that time to watch that film? And man, and but he, if you're gonna do it, do it, man. And that that goes for anything in life. But man, B, but man, BB, man, he he. Uh, he was a he's a mastermind thinker, man. His mind, his mind, like he is is it can, is doing all this stuff, man, and it makes sense. And he's he's, he's he'll take what they give you and, and just break it down, man. The type of coach BB is, and I want to share this because this is like my most like memorable football moment ever. And I don't, I'll bring it right back, man. But yeah, man, coach, coach, we, we uh, two thousand my senior year two thousand seven we uh, played O State. It was a uh, they had that I think it was a. A first and goal, man. One yard to go, right? They uh, before I get into that story, the year before they same situation. First down, stopped them. Second down, stopped them. Third down, stopped them. Then they ran a naked. They ran a naked and scored because we didn't, we didn't, we weren't, we didn't do a responsibility, right? It's key, key, key. key. It happens real fast, but right. man, this next year, the year after my senior year, he was like, "I'm putting you in that spot." And we're gonna practice it, and you better. He's like, I trust you, and I'm, and that's the yeah. same linebacker, man. You you supposed Ooh. to be like, you supposed to be like two forty, two thirty, because you're holding up sometimes tight ends or tackles or whatever. Mm-hmm. And but he said he trusted me, man. So I'm like, man, I took it serious. We watched that film over and over and over and over again. In my head, I'm like, I'm like coach B too. I'm like thinking about the possibility. What's the possibility of a first and goal mm-hmm. like that scenario happening again? So we practice and then practice. You said, we're not going to screw this up, man. We're, I don't care if it may not happen, but we ain't going to mess up again. Long story, that same scenario came up again. First down, we stopped them. Second down, we stopped them. Third down, we stopped them. I think it was a timeout, man. We come back out there going for it. And this is it. This is it. This is how smart BB is. He, he, got, he was ready for a 0% chance play happening and then running through the same scenario again happening. They ran the same play again. They ran a naked. I was an man on line of scrimmage. I have to look at that guy go down. My head goes up to see if there's a puller coming so I can blow them up. And then if that's not happening, like, but then I have to look at the mesh point. So it's a lot of stuff. And so mm. it's just it's boom, 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 real fast. So it's no guessing. Everything tells you what to do. But we practiced it so much, and he wanted to be ready for it, and they ran a naked. And now I'm in a position where I can't make a tackle, but I can run and keep my outside arm free, which means making him completely stop if he wanted to get in that end zone. So I turned and booked it to the sideline as hard as I could, doing my – and he cut back, man, and he got 
crushed, man. The ball popped up. DJ scooped it up, ran it back a little bit. Man, but all the way to the sideline, man, I ain't never seen him that happy in my life, man. For <laughs> anything I've done. Right side, dives, and he's pushed back. He found a that yeah. people don't see it. That's, yeah. what he, that's how much he cares, man. Yeah. And when you see him in these big games, it's not by coincidence, man. It's, it, this is who he is. You know, this is what he believes. And that's the influence he has on, on people and teams and things. And But, man, BB's incredible, dude. He, he's, a, he's a mastermind, man. And he, he's a student to life and, 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 and listening and paying attention and – you know, he might meet you, J.D., and there's things about J.D. that he loves. And he's going to take yep. those things and he's going to put them in his tool belt, and that's how he progresses through life, man. And, yep. and, and uh, he, he shares all that stuff back. He sh- shares the wealth. He teaches us how to be this way. You hey, know, J- when I was a tra- Go ahead. That. Go ahead. I was, yeah, gonna, good, good. I was gonna say, hey JD, he comes to me. Hey JD, how'd you know that play was gonna be pirate? I know you knew. Well, coach, because Burdon usually tight, tightens down a little bit, and Rufus is a little bit tighter on his heat or uh, up on his toes. Okay, yeah. well, we ain't gonna do that next time. And you know, when you mentioned it as far as student life, I think of a few different areas where I saw him interact with you. I mean, he would meet you at the door as soon as you walked in. To you're about to go into special teams meeting, you're padded up. You got a sandwich, a peanut butter jelly sandwich in each hand, one in each cheek, and he's uh, a, he's asking you where the hell your sandwiches are. <laughs> where, the, where the other ones at? You know? Oh you yeah, know? yeah. I mean, you got bananas on the joints. I mean, it, you you just throwing them down, uh, just trying to gain that weight. But also along with that, I mean, I got to see him in linebacker meetings. The intensity from Monday to Thursday, and then the teaching. Friday night in in the rooms and just going over and making sure we're good on that and blah, 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 blah. And then lastly, could just kind of like what you said, man, just the details on the special teams. Hey, J.D., when when don't that's a corner right there, don't trust that guy's eyes. He can bail and blah, blah. I mean, just little oh, – but, God, it's stealing, sl- it's stealing signs. I don't know how many times – I'm coach, this doesn't look – slam dogs, slam dogs. This don't look like a slam dog list. Sure enough, as soon as that damn b- b- ball was snapped, that safety was blitzing. And, I mean, to be able to communicate with you guys on the sidelines, turn around, steal a sign, I mean, takes a different level, man. Different, different dude. Go ahead. And he, man, but it's because that's who he is, you know. Mm-hmm. So, he's so disciplined with who he is as a human being and a soul. That's the, the football is just like, that's just, that's carryover. Mm-hmm. What happened? And, so you know, you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And how cool, man, it's just, it goes so deep, so from every perspective, what if he did that with every every player? Like he went to the fullback. What do you see right here? What how to 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 what made you be able to make this play? What were you looking at? He can go to the quarterback. He can go to the running back. He's asking everybody, so then he can take that to his side of the ball. And yep. you know what I'm saying? So, dude, yeah. it, it, his mind is like a like a he, he creates this matrix, man. Like you know, uh, unseen scenario. You know, and once he sees it, he adds it to that matrix. So it's in his, his it's in his like his. Book of knowledge, man, like in the things. And like, like Belichick, man, I think Belichick operates that way too. That's you know, right. where like you're not going to get us with the same thing again, ever again. You know what I'm saying? Right. And and you, you take what you're given. But man, BV, dude, he's uh, he's on a whole nother level again. I was saying about just the, the type of influence he can, the impact ha- that he has. Because again, like I believe more than anything, it, he start, it starts with who he is, man. And then, man, football though, he just him. He cares, dude, and yeah. he's going to be there. You know, he was there in a mighty way, and he is. He makes his presence known, not by what he says and how he talks, but who he is, man, and how he goes about the game. And, like, he's genuine with it. And, and I believe that's why he's also super successful in recruiting because it's, it's it starts with him, right? Yeah. I mean, and people want to be that, man. If we're going to dream, we want to dream big. When we see something like that, big, you want to be a part. And that's how it was for me. I guess I'm speaking on certain, but that's, that's kind of like how my mom worked with it. And. And just what you know, just the things that he brings, and he's always involved. If he was in charge of the the, the punt team, you know, helping get no them set punts. up, man. no block punts, nobody's gonna trick us, nobody's gonna show us anything we're not ready for. Don't worry. What JD's gonna be, uh, Teddy's the punt prote- uh, personal protector. We know everybody's gonna line up. We've got an eleven man protection. We've got a ten man, a nine man, an eight, a seven, a six. I mean, you name it. So, <laughs> yeah. and, and and even, you know, I remember a meeting one time, dude, not even a meeting, I remember walking down the hallway, dude, you know, Joe John was a tight end, like, he, he in the film room with you, um, Coach, Coach Venable, because Coach Venable's kind of recruited our area, man, we walk in the door one time, and, <laughs> and he just, uh, he's walking into the hallways of the locker room, Joe John, where's your food, like, you know, just the impact that he has on everybody, everybody. man, and he, he sees you, and then he, yeah. he, Joe John obviously knows he's not getting on him, but it's like, 
he wants me he also wants me to be successful man and that stuff you know that's just him like every time just a little stuff man and yeah. it's uh one grain at a, at a time and it's built like this this monumental of a person i think and uh, and his success comes from that but even when he was younger man when he was coaching us that's who he was and and i think people just want to be a part of that man and that was that was me and just dude he uh He's a, you know, he's a mastermind in the X's and O's too, obviously. Oh but. my God, yeah, man. Yeah. We got, we got to talk about your pro career, man. You had a good pro career out of the, with the Niners. Got you a UFL championship. Uh, beat some team down in Florida up, uh, some Orlando Tuskers team. Uh, yeah. Oh man, that was tough. Fun, fun game though. Uh, but yeah, anyway, congrats to you, and are just super proud of you for that. But let me know how San Fran and Ve- and Vegas. You got to live in Vegas, dog. Yeah, man. Um, San Fran was a little two-year thing. I got I, I, I signed free agency. Um, uh, uh, the 2008 draft. Um, I didn't get drafted. Signed free agency, and um, uh, had a hell of a camp, man. Actually, um, you know me. I went in there with same mindset, like when I came to OU, and that's what it was all about, though. That's what you were dreaming of when you was a right. kid, and you right. finally get there. You think I was about to mess that shit up? Excuse my language, my bad. No, you good? You good? You good? Oh, and it's like. Man, I took everything serious, man. I knew all this. They, they, they were mm-hmm. so impressed by how, like, we approach the game and how mm-hmm. we study, the things we can say, the terminology, because mm-hmm. how BB prepared us, right? So it's like, man, it's, it, it put me ahead of the game in the sense that, man, I get in there, man, I'm getting picks and, and, and just, just having a good camp to hustle. You can see it all on the tape. Again, you all, it's about being – if that's all they have to grade you with is the film that you practice with, right? So, man, I was – I'll be a half field safety showing up on screen plays and and uh I had a good camp and right when training camp started, I get hurt, man. And I'm talking about this is probably the most serious injury I've ever had. And I didn't know at the time that it was serious. It, long story, it was a thigh thigh contusion. We just we're first Ooh. day in our helmets and, and uppers and Office is on the goal line, and there's a, there was a safety, DJ Parker from Virginia Tech, and we're guarding the slots as safeties, and they run this little mesh route, and we ran full speed into each mm. other, dude. And I finished practice, dude, and I'm just like, man, forget this. All could go in my head. I remember that that one time I heard Bill, Bill Parcell say, man, if, he's like, you you get hurt in training camp, you done. Mm-hmm. And and you know me, I'm a late round guy, so I get up, I finish. Man, we get into the film room, I get some ice. About 30 minutes in the film, man, like like my my boxer briefs are about to rip, and I'm like, damn, my leg is swelling up. And uh, anyway, long story, the, probably one of the worst injuries I ever had. Um, like pockets of blood in my leg for oh. like three months, man. I, they were doing like research on it at Stanford Medical Center to try to get it out, and they couldn't, so I had to let it reabsorb, and then I went back to OU to train. But man, I was doing really well, and I got cut because of that. They tried to let me rehab, and um. They end up signing me back though the next year, kind of the same thing, no injuries. I came back even stronger, faster. And then that was the year Crabtree decided to hold out and they had to pick up some receivers and need safety. So got cut again. That landed me in Canada. Go to Canada, um, do well there. Uh, about to sign a contract, figure out that there's this UFL league. You know, uh, we play less games, there's more money, better chance to get back into the NFL. Not into a long term contract in, in Canada. So I uh, hop, skip, and jump from. Uh, Hamilton and the UFL has a draft. I get picked up by the Las Vegas team. I spent two years there, man. That was really fun, by the mm-hmm. way. Um, yeah, I imagine. And uh, I uh, I worked my way up into being a starter. You know, um, you new new coaches again, new atmosphere. This team had went to the championship the year before, so coming in there, you know, I'm a very vocal guy too. Um, I got a certain swag about myself when I'm playing, um, and you know, I want to be there, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be there. So. I get in there and I show what I could do. I talk about the things that I know and share my wisdom. You know, sometimes it rubs people wrong. Sometimes it doesn't because it's like, they, I'm not trying to be a know-it-all. I'm just, I'm trying to get on this field. That's why right. I'm here. And uh, so you work your way into that new team. They learn to like you. And then, dude, I, I had a good, it was fun there, man. I had, man, I had great teammates. Played with Teddy, um, Brandon. Eric uh, Henderson. All, all coach out of, Brandon. yes, yes. D-Line, B-Mo. Uh, yeah, the, yeah. The Eric Henderson, Braxton. the d I forgot Braxton was on that team, but y'all's DN is the D line coach at uh, he's Aaron Donald's uh, D line coach. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. Ballin, who coaches, uh, I don't think Oboe's with him, but uh, shoot, he had Aaron Donald and Dominican Sue uh, for a minute. So really proud of that cat. 
Uh, but yeah, y'all were nice though, man. Y'all had that real hard hitter at safety with the uh, long. Dreads. Oh, uh, CJ, CJ Wallace, that yeah, dude man. was crazy. Man, he was, dude. He tried to, yeah, he tried to, he tried to uh, lay it down to Dante one time, man. But Dante was <laughs> leaning, dude, yeah. running full speed, dude. It was, they knocked him out, man. That, was awesome. Funny, that is awesome. Well, yeah, with the one thing that you hit on about the terminology, and I think the fans will like this, is you know when I I never realized how much Sumlin, uh, Coach Hayes, Coach Long. And what you talked about, like with BV and all them with the X's and O's, I never really realized how ahead of the game we were until when I left Chicago. I learned Chicago's offense really easily. You know, I'm, I come into Coach Gruden. I, I, I had to work out for Tampa, and they signed me, and they're like, hey, we need you to learn the offense. We're going to put in 1,000 plays. And I'm like, oh, good God, that's a lot of plays, you know. Well, he puts a play up on the board, and he goes, okay, J.D., this is a green right how to watch come as he dancer. And I'm like, oh, damn, that looks a lot like I write 969Y, whatever. And he's like, oh, okay, well, what do y'all call blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, well, it sounds like you call two back uh, colors. So you've got green is the eye. You've got red is right, uh, tailback or split back, well, tailback on the right. Blue is split back to uh, fullback on the left, right, whatever, blah, 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 blah. I mean, you're just going through it and you're like, they're like, oh, oh okay, well, I ain't got to worry about teaching you that much, you know, blah, 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 blah. But again, you, you see other guys come in from other places, even, you know, places that won. Places that you would imagine had good p- coaches, players, and they weren't that far advanced. So, again, mm-hmm. you, you were a really, really good player. Two more things, then I'll let you go. Got to get your thoughts on, obviously, the, the current team, uh, If w- what you see with them. Are you still a super fan? And then let everybody know what you're doing these days. Yeah, as far as the team now, man, I I, I don't – I mean, I'm not super big into the X's and O's, man, more than this. I just try I, – now I just kind of – you know me, I, I pay attention. When I was a part of that, I was part of it. You know, I'm, now I'm away. I, you know, I still rep my school. I got my, my, my bottle, you know. That's what's up. <laughs> I got my bottle. But, man, I just – right now it's, it's – it's, you know, I'm so involved in other things. Like, But, like, I, I feel energy at OU. Man, I've, I've got to meet Coach Riley. Um, um, personally know a few of the players. Um, I still go up there once or twice uh, a year for sure. Usually, always in spring and one or two to three games. But man, you, you feel the energy, man. You feel a, a, a new energy in there, and one that is it's a it's a it's a mix of you know Coach Stoops and then this new generation and, and, and you know Coach Riley. Man, I think uh, I don't know him personally. Again, I met him, but I feel you know um, from the things I see, the things I hear, and just is just all it's a vibe. You know, you get it. That's he. You know he's hungry, man. He's a, he's a student. He he surrounds himself around greatness. That's that's what he's about mentally, right? And and then, but he also he has this this thing where he just knows how to reach out and and and, and connect, you know. And uh, these players love him, man. And um, he he has potential to be as great as he wants to be. I feel. Um, and when you can connect and those players believe in you, like it's now it's up to you to lead them. You know what I'm saying? And, and but the potential is there. You know, you got Castiglione, man. He surrounds that place with amazing people. Um, the standard is there. It's always been there. And uh, it's, it's, it, it comes down to, to me always how much how much a player wants it. You know, the talent's always there. The ability is always there. The the coaching, the smarts, every, everything is always there. The whole package is always there. And, and so, but, man, I just – I think that – People are wanting to be there, like I mean, the top players in every position all the time. I don't care what you say, man. And uh, so um, that's what I think about the team. I think they 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 can be as great as they want to be, man. And again, you know me; it always comes down to the leadership, you know, and and the leaders of the team, kind of what they're doing, and you know how they're approaching it, and what it's about to them. So uh, and we again, we're all driven by different things. So um, there's a whole other thing leading an entire team, you know, and then you got your individual leaders. But, yeah, they potential is, is where they, wherever they want it to be, man. It's, it's ours to lose, as I, as I like to say. That's what I feel. Don't I'm know that, you. but that's what I feel. So. I'm with you. Yeah, I just think, like you said, if, if, I think just we got to solidify a few more spots. Hell, when we were there, Lewis, our D-line, we were crazy. They were crazy. I'm sure you could speak to it, but, I mean, they kept y'all clean a lot of the games, man. And they were able yeah. to for, force people into things. And I think that's what we've got to get back to, man. The SEC is really – Clemson, obviously, with BV. They're able to force pressure, man. They're getting dudes that um, – and, and, man, I mean, losing BV hurt. I ain't even going to – I mean, we can't – we can't sugarcoat it. <laughs> I mean, that, you can't yeah, replace that, I, dude. That's, you can't that's replace that, part. dude. That, yeah, the X's and O's are, man, like, that's the best – that's one of the best – that's the one of the coolest parts because, like, you can, not only are you efficient in the psychology of, like, or what made a coach do what – 
the other team do? What do we got to do against it to stop it? This scenario, that scenario. But it's also being efficient with your with your assets, the players, right? So we got this D line. They've been out here for so many plays, man. This player right here gets kind of tired, and such and such, and then you know, putting that new fresh wave in to keep it fresh, let them get back. You know what I'm saying? So it's just that's part of the game too. Sometimes I don't know how OU does it, but that's 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 there's a science to that, man. And depending on how a scenario goes, like you got to be making on the fly choices. Like, then I really love like how BB was like that. By the way, not to go back to him or he is like that, but just that's a, that's. I mean, that's taking it to a whole nother level. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so you're kind of knowing how your players tire out and and. Uh, and then sometimes knowing when those sometimes when those players like man you got to give extra man we need you we need you to stay out you know what I'm saying yeah so that's real yeah. G- got to get your thoughts on current events uh, everything going on in the world anything you want to comment on uh, do you want to um, keep you gonna keep me sane throughout this whole deal man let me know what you're gonna post on the Facebook group uh, let me know oh man dude <laughs> I uh, I believe every human being is on their own journey man. Mm. I think um, that the way life sees and insults you, given your certain circumstances, whatever you was born into, uh, you know, um, what you've taken on both intentionally and not by choice kind of shapes you. It shapes mm. how you think, shapes how you feel about things. It, it, uh, it creates a whole set of habits of who you are, you know, and – I think that sometimes need to be, be it needs to be the base and the basis and understood for before we go trying to relate to each other because I think sometimes we want to be heard and we want to be seen but people don't receive things a lot of times the way we intended for them to receive it and it's only based on everything I just previously said and it's not that they're stupid or necessarily ignorant but they just you know they really just don't know and so you know, the conversations, you know, you already, you've been seeing all this racial stuff to me as a bunch of like, you know, I don't think it's that stuff ne- never going to stop. So we never stop talking about it then. So, um, not, I didn't mean me. I didn't mean that in a negative way, I mean, it's mean. never going to stop, mean. but there's always going to be good and evil, you know, and, and, uh, high and low and in and out. Right. So that's why it's what contrasts. That's how we know the other thing is there. Um, but it's, it's, it's when you're met with it, how you deal with it. And, I believe when people become more aware, self-aware, first and foremost, they can become more aware of things on the outside. Uh, the thing is, we try to do that first, and then, and then everybody's just battling through traumas, man. And mm. this, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't like to sit there spreading all the prop. To me, it's all propaganda. Is 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 it's energy. Everything's energy, man. Why 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 go take a gossip and give it to you so you can go give it to ten more people? Then they give it to a hundred more people. So. When I share things, man, I, I I I do like to be funny, man. But also, dude, I'm a free spirit, man, and I believe, you know, there's it's a it's a lot more to it than than what meets the eye, what we feel, and uh, I always go back to the individual, man. Just just stay strong, you know. Keep learning, man. Get knowledge at all costs. Read, you know. Let your actions be based on the truths that you know, and not what people just repeated to you, and you just think. And then when you hit a a brick wall, like you ain't got nobody to blame but yourself. No, that's weird. You know, so. As far as that stuff goes, man, that's kind of, you know, um, where I'm at, man. But you know me, man. I'm always – I love my team. I love I love people, man. That's I'm, that's that's what it's about. And uh, James, come here. Uh, dude, this, my son. I wanted to share one more story, man. Yeah, come on. My son's right here. I wanted to come say hi to you. Come here, James. Come here. He say hi to Lewis. Go Raiders. <laughs> he what's loves, up? He loves trolling me and saying go Raiders. Say what's up? Oh. He said, go Raiders. Go Raiders. Good that drunk fan that was yelling at me after the 05 game. Put put your ear. Put it in. Oh right. Oh yeah, ear. that's right. Actually, I was showing some put people that the other day. Yeah. What do you want to say to him? That's Lewis. That's one of my old what's teammates. What's up, man? Hey, uh, go Raiders. <laughs> go what was that Raiders. boxing team that would beat you? Yeah. No, he played on my football team. No, what was that football team that beat you? Really what good? football team? The USC. See, he wants to bring up USC now. Oh, right. U-E-U-S- now he's bringing up USC. USC. Wow. See, this is what you don't have to look forward to with having kids. Uh, let me promise you that. I'm let me promise watching. you that. I'm all, get out. Okay. Get out. Okay. Get out. Okay. See, dude, dude I like your setup, man. Yeah, thank you, bro. I appreciate it. Take this damn dog, James. Thank okay. you. Uh, but thank you, bro. I've been working on it. Um, I've had a lot of time off with, you know, teaching kids and all that and, uh, having that kid. So, uh, he's already totaling everything up. He's like, bro, I got this auctioned. I got, this is going for the sale. This is going to be leased. So no, I'm kidding. Uh, he's, he's really That's excited. Funny. He, he like he likes this room. So, you know, I, but you know, me, Lou Bake, I'm, I'm, I, I, I like football or it's, I obviously, I love it. It's as far as for him, I, I don't want to force 
Dude, we had a good. Of course, we had, we had a great run. Yeah, yeah, we we had a great run. We were raised differently. We were, you know, football was a different was game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so um, I was just proud of him. He did some bungees and TRX the other day, dog. So, you know, we got a little work in, and and uh, that's it's just a tool, man. You that's know, it. that's it. That's it, man. So, but I'm just, I'm really proud of him, and I'm really proud of you, brother. I appreciate it, man. You know, you inspired me, man. When I remember you, one of the. I was just telling my girl uh, today, I was like one of my first, I remember when I first walked into that indoor for my first workout, man. And I remember Coach Smitty had picked a first, he picked a couple guys that he thought in his head that are good to ride with these, with the big cats. You know how we used to throw the young cats in that first summer. In the summer, the the freshmen had their own thing, but then there was that few that he would pick out and throw them with the already running crowd that he thought maybe mm-hmm. was gonna play. And I wasn't one of them, man, nobody remember. Man, I use that as like, man, all right, okay. So I walk into that indoor, man, and I remember, dude, like, damn, I'm actually here. Like, it's time to go to work. And I remember bumping into you, man. I remember bumping into you, and I remember us talking, if I even remember this correctly. And I was like, man, I, I want to lead these guys one day, man. And I told you I was going to be a captain, dude. I, I remember mm-hmm. that day, too. Man. And I think the story goes as, it, as, as what I just said, but, man, and it ended up happening, dude. And that, to me, the only reason I wanted to share that, bro, is because I was like, to me, at a at a lot of the things I was able to accomplish in life, man. There, I don't think there's nothing more rewarding than like a group of people selecting you to lead them, man. And it was uh, it's a testament to you know working hard, man. I don't do that to brag, JD, or say man. nothing like that. But it's more than like when you put your mind on something, bro. You can you can do anything, man. And 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 uh, to have a, a, a a group of people, this whole body of people, you know, follow you. And that's what, that's that's how you were, man. I used to look at you, man. I was like, man, I'm going to be like that, man. And this, it wasn't necessarily your athletic ability or what you could do and what you could do, man. This whole world, like, the whole state of Oklahoma love you, J.D., man. And, it, man. And, 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 and I was like, man, it's not that I wanted to be liked or likable, but, man, that this dude just – he has it together on and off the field. He's very well balanced, man. I could see where he, he could suppress some – energy that if you let that crap explode, you know what I'm saying? And you just, you had it together, man. I was like, I wanted to be like that, but I, I, I want to be a leader, dude. And and uh, I just remember that day, man, I made up my mind. I was like, I want to be a captain, dude. Really? Like, I want to lead. And, I and it wasn't easy. But yeah, that, that, that came from you, dude. And I, and I always respected it. you, bro. Like, big time, man. And whether it was on the field, even situations off the field that people don't even know about, man, where you just, you'll gather your people, man, but like, just, you know, like, you keep them even flow. And that was you. But yeah. You got on that field, you're a whole nother animal. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, man, we 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 disliked you a lot early on just because how much you pushed us, but it turned into respect, and then it really just turned into a brotherhood, man. Just me, you, and I never saw uh, me and uh, my backup, Dane Zaslaw. Uh, you got close to, uh, you know, just yeah. uh, before you know it, you were over, y'all were over our house all the time. Uh, yeah, you man. know, uh, there's certain stories that we can't talk about after that. Uh, you know, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but uh, JD, yeah. JD had a house on campus. <laughs> Go ahead. In the park, and, and he, man, he took care of me. He let us, he let us stack our cars in his parking lot so we could avoid paying for parking tickets. And we had, <laughs> yes, sir, we, we made a little bit of money through the scholarship, but it wasn't enough to buy a parking pass, man. That's real. JD was the parking pass. I was the. Just, I, I posted a man. picture. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I posted a picture on our on our page today, and I said this reminds me of a couple of y'all, and it's a car <laughs> with like five tickets on it. Yeah, that was one of them. <laughs> that, yeah, you had that yeah. gold, the gold tourist. Was it a gold gold prism or a That's Mercury? Uh, a Mercury sable. Man. There you go. Yep, it was gold. <laughs> I remember that joint. Yeah, I think me and DJ Wolf had the most parking tickets. <laughs> DJ had earned them too, though. DJ DJ yeah. earned. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Man. But we, yeah, dude. It was, JD, you're, you're good people, man. You're good people, man. You're one of those guys like BB that bring a whole bunch of mustard to the team, bro. Um, Appreciate it, bro. It wasn't just offense. It was keeping people together, you know, keeping people level-headed, having the side talks with your teammates, man. People don't ever see that stuff. People just see the football running around. Look at these little guys running around the ball, man. It's, it's a, we, we learned all our life. We learned so many life lessons. And what you don't realize and appreciate, unless you go sit down and think about it, is, man, you was around – you literally, literally were around legends. And when mm-hmm. I say legends, it's not to worship them, but these guys took their own personal life serious, how they think, how they go about life. And we were around that and we absorbed that. And, and look what everybody's doing, man. People, you know, people, that you get to take that and, and, and 
And wow, you you around some of the greatest people, man. And you just mm -hmm. don't you don't, don't you don't see it unless you think about it. And it's like, man, we we uh, we were part of greatness, and it just gives you a measuring stick of what you can be. So it's good to go back and think about this stuff, talk about it. You know, that's that's why I love, man. I love doing stuff like this because it takes you down memory lane. And it's real. You're like, man, we did all that, man. Mm -hmm. We did all that. Yeah. We put our bodies through that, man. And so just like, and so for in times like this, man, just. To always be mendable and 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 adaptable and and being water like Bruce Lee say, you know, just, that's real. Just be be flexible and um, turn bad into good and in these moments. And so, yeah, dude, you're a you're a good dude, man. I definitely appreciate you. You you started a whole big old group, remember, man? Yeah, I, I'll yeah. Make, over a thousand guys in there, man. That's the, but that's the stuff I'm talking about. And, yeah. and we go in there, and we get to talk and. You, you you feel it, you know. It's a feeling, anyways, man. You don't always got to be physically in place, but yeah, that's you, dude. And we appreciate you, man. Appreciate you, brother. Like you said, it's a vibe. It's a brother. And we got to do this again, man. We gonna grab well, gather a couple. Man. We'll gather a couple uh, homeboys that we can incriminate, tell some real, real funny stories. Uh, oh, yeah, I love man. it. That'll be awesome, man. Appreciate you. Uh, love you, Lube. Have a great one, dog. Love you too, man. Appreciate you. It'll be a great episode of Fullback You. All right, all right, welcome into Fullback You, and this is going to be an amazing podcast, a uh, cat that I've really gotten close to. Uh, and man, we're just going to cover everything. We're just going to do it. My younger brother, Kaz Ever, how you feeling, bro? Feeling good. I mean, probably as good as I can doing these uh, quarantine times. Well, let everybody know where you at, what you up to these days. I'm in Philly. Um, in my last, spent my last two years of college at OU, 2012, 2013. And um, since then, relocated back to Philly, financial industry. Obviously, things have been shaky in my industry, given given everything that's going on. But um, back in Philly, yeah. back from uh, where I was born and raised. Man, I hope everything's going well for me for you. Uh, man, talk about that. Like, how'd you get to OU, bro? Like, we ain't got many cats from Philly. Respect to Philly. Love right. Will Smith growing up. You know what I'm saying? But uh just let me know i mean how how the journey take you i know you went juco for a little bit but just let me know how where it took you yeah man so let, let's date back a little before juco man i was uh coming out of high school um the philly area didn't get too much attention we had a couple highlights a couple guys that maybe went to penn state uh maybe went to michigan some some local guys but as a state we, we got a lot more guys going now so me coming out of high school, my, my biggest offers were University of Delaware and Temple. Temple is a bus stop away from, from where I live, local team. And I went to a University of Delaware camp and, and got a scholarship. And I chose University of Delaware. So that's where I started. D1AA. Uh, went to you know went to college, and as any kid from from my environment, it was new, man. It was I came I came from a culture where I didn't really interact too much outside of my community. Meeting new people, <laughs> having the freedom, so I made a lot of the decisions that these young guys make. And um, Jason. The reporter that w was at the Oklahoma mm -hmm. did a phenomenal did a phenomenal story. I'm um, kind of backtracking, um, you know, how I got to OU. But my final strike at the University of Delaware is when I, I got a DUI mm. and I got kicked out. So um, went to junior college. Well, actually, I I debated the idea if I should go to JUCO or not. I thought that I just blew my opportunity to play sports altogether. Um, but man, one of my lifelong missions is to, to make my dad proud. And I really felt like I disappointed him at the time um, by some of the decisions that I made. And so we had a chat, we talked about junior college and from Philadelphia, had a bunch of friends or a couple friends that were in Woodland Hills, California. Uh, right by Hollywood and, and L.A. in that area, Southern California, that were doing well. People that didn't get the opportunity to get a scholarship initially, but was down there trying to live the dream. So I got my news from Delaware that it was official. 
that I was being kicked out. And maybe a week later, I was in California uh, starting my second semester in 2011. Man. In 2011. Man. So get to JUCO. I know a lot of people look at Last Chance U. I haven't had the opportunity to to look at the, the series, but I hear it's like everybody asks me, would JUCO really like that? I get there. I see my friends. They got they got an apartment. Twelve people living in a living in a three bedroom apartment. Mm-hmm. So I put my bags down. I said, "Man, let me let me lap the neighborhood and see." First, wait, first my my initial getting off the airplane. They said I had to take my Philly hat off because it was red. So that was <laughs> that was my first introduction. Yeah, yeah. You're like, like okay, take, okay. Yeah, I know where I'm at now. Yeah, so. I lapped the neighborhood. Studios were going for like fifteen hundred. Um, no, 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 no. Twenty two hundred. Mm. Uh, one bedrooms were maybe twenty seven, mm. and then it just went up from there. So by the time I finished taking my lap, man, I was the thirteenth person in the in the three bedroom apartment, and man, it was. Uh, I got an air mattress. I purchased the air mattress. I was. Uh, sleeping in the, in the living room and uh, had to wait for your cycle. So people graduated and then you, you, officially, you eventually got a room. Wow. And, um, you know, but I, I treated it as like a punishment almost. Like I, I had opportunities that they wanted. That's real. Why, you know, this is why I'm here. So, you know, that, that year with the California weather and I really treated it like a, a mission. I didn't do partying. I didn't go out. A lot of people started to entertain the marijuana because it was big out there. I didn't do any of that. And I was there on a mission. So I uh, played seven games. I, I couldn't play the, the full season because I had high ankle sprain. And um, I got some attention. My first offer was Utah. Um, and that was before I even played the game. I had a little bit of film at Delaware. And um, they came out to see guys during the spring and they, they gave me a scholarship. Um, and then I think I pretty much got most of the big 12. I forget some of, you know, who was some of the uh, schools, but it was most of the big 12. I got some pac 10 and I got some, uh, a few big 10, but, but not much. So highly ranked. I mean, more, you know, higher ranked than I did coming out of high school. I think I was like the number two corner, number three corner coming out of JUCO. Um, I forget where I was on the, the overall list, but then I, I got a call from OU. I think it was uh, it was Coach Venables. They were actually recruiting a safety, Gerald Bowman. Uh, he was the number one player overall. So they were looking for a safety in the corner, and he actually sent them my tape. I wasn't even thinking OU at at the time because from where I'm from, Penn State is for sure. the OU yeah. in, in my area. Whiteout nights, right? Yeah. So, um, so yeah, they 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 sent my film and they they said I had a I fit something that they were trying to do. They were trying to implement like a nickel corner. So I think before that they did just boundary and field corners and they didn't really do the nickel and dime package too much. And um, yeah, man, they, they flew out, flew out to see my parents. Um, you know, I, I, I did my uh, unofficial visit and um, they were in my top three. So it was Texas Tech, Utah, and OU. I think it might've been South Florida as a fourth at the time, but um, I don't know if you know about my commitment, but I committed to Texas Tech. Oh, all we up until I actually did my my announcement and said Texas Tech. Wow! Put the hat on Texas Tech. Coach Martinez calls me right before I fax in my paperwork and started running down all because this is this is that time like this year, man. It was a lot of coaching changes. Mm -hmm. Pretty much every school that was in my top. Um, 
top four or five had some type of coaching change. Wow. So um, Texas Tech D coordinator left and went to TCU, I think, last minute, <laughs> and they didn't tell me. So I felt slightly betrayed, and, um, you know, Martinez made made the phone call. I knew Coach Venables was, was leaving, and Mo- Martinez told me how he would still be there and they still had a plan. I think he got Bob on the – on the on the line and you know taught me to to sway my decision to go to OU. So I had my my uh, announcement Texas Tech, but I faxed in my OU papers. That's what's up, and that's how I got the OU. Talk about when you got there, man. Uh, still had Schmitty there. Couldn't have been easy. Uh, oh man. Just <laughs> what do you tell people about Schmitty? What do you tell people about learning uh, early on? Just the, just that maturation process of yeah you know, strength um, and knowledge. Strength and knowledge, right, right. Um, Smitty, man. I never had too much bad times with Smitty because I was a workhorse. You know, I I wasn't a, a guy that was falling off. The only issue that I really had, though, was the boundary between training and working out injured versus hurt. Mm-hmm. So when I got there initially, come on, guy, you never hurt. That's the thing. You what? What do you mean? Right, well, big right, dog, right, big right. dog. You ain't hurt. Come on, big dog. You, you right. d- just get these one leg squats in. Don't worry about. It. We we got to play Texas this week, dog. You like exactly. So <laughs> that, yeah, that was that was my biggest issue. I couldn't, and and it hurt me actually a lot because I was trying to make an impression on a new coach that I didn't have a relationship with, mm. Mike Stoops. And I had I I didn't have a conversation with him coming in, but all of a sudden I'm here. They want me to you know do all this testing. I have hamstring issues. Had like a I think I had like a strain or a minor strain, and I was trying to tell Smith uh, Smitty like I don't think it's in my best interest to run this forty right now and, until I get healthy. He tells me, hey, just, just do the best you can, big dog. That's it. Just, just do the best you can. So I run a 4-6. Mind you, this is my pretty much my resume for my new coach. I run the 4-6, and uh, that gets to Mike. And I feel like from there, it was a uphill battle. His first conversation with me was, I thought you were fast. Right. I'm right. like, okay. All right. So, you know, from then, you know, things were kind of moving fast because I didn't know coming in, um, Martinez and Coach Venables told me that there was a couple guys that would never play at OU. That's that's the reason that I was coming in. Like you you are coming in and there are guys that have opportunity, that have proven themselves. I mean that um had had opportunity to prove themselves, but they will never play. They would have the transfer to get on the field under my coaching. So I come in and it's a clean slate with Mike. So that was my my resume with a four six and he thought I was undersized. He didn't like my my my, my wingspan. And um yeah, I just I just felt like it was it was uphill my my entire time at, at OU. So uh Man. That's tough to hear, but no, I get it. And dude, you you see it with D line. I mean, you saw you know a shift from yeah early two thousands. They would take chances on guys that were under six foot. Now they don't do that shit. You know they're not gonna take right. no chance. They want every D tackle to be over six three. Blah 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 blah. And I'm like, man, if a dude can play, a dude can play. And then unfortunately, sometimes the dudes that we do take a chance on just haven't produced like that. And right. so to me, uh, we had Will Johnson on uh, the uh, a pod. And I gave him, I gave him some advice. Go ahead. I told him, don't run your 40. Mm -hmm. That was my advice because he came in from Juco. Mm -hmm. I caught him at a a great time. It was right before he was supposed to run his 40. Um, I said, look, if you, if you're not a blazing fast guy, which he wasn't, let your field play do the talking. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm grateful he took that advice because he's a he's a great player. He's yep. a great nickel, and he, and he did well. So I don't know if that advice helped him, but um, he didn't do it, and he got the opportunity to do what he could on the field. That's real. No, and I was going to say, I mean, he's not a huge dude either. I mean, it's just te- – so and you can comment on this, Kaz. Te- so much of it to me at DB is technique, brother. I saw mm-hmm. guy. I saw guys in the NFL. Shit, they probably couldn't have ran a four seven, but you couldn't right. run by them just because their technique was so good. They knew uh, how to recognize routes and eliminate space and do those types of things. Um, you and I became closer uh, when you were even in school. I think you saw me a few times on Twitter. For for one, I think you saw how I speak used to speak out, still speak out that whole deal. So respect for you for that. But two, I think you also saw that I, shit, dude. I understand my offensive player. I mean, I know what we're, what positions we're trying to put y'all in. I know how tough it is to to when we go four wide to put y'all in a position of where if you are just sticking with bound, you know what I'm saying. If y'all aren't putting nickel and dime out there, we we gonna have some advantages. Right. What do you, what do you tell people when they say, "Hey man, we need all we need to do is press," or "Hey man, we play off too much," or "Hey man, what what's it what's the what what do you think of current times as far as DBs going against wide receivers? Is there a certain uh, defensive backfield that you look at when you say, hey, this is the most complete defense? Or is there just not a complete secondary? Let me know. When you say people that give that criticism, is that internal or external? Uh, That's a great outside. point. That's a great point. I don't ever hear it from internally. I don't, right. Because I think internally, I think all those people see y'all's one-on-one drills and just see how much space is, you know. we As, as football players, we know where – we know how y'all like to align. Everybody needs help at certain points. Oh, yeah. You don't want to <laughs> – hell, we need help as blockers a certain time. Mm-hmm. I mean, every play damn near starts with a double team. I mean, so, you know, again, we're – external to ex- answer your question, just people from the outside in, the fan perspective, the, the all that. Um, Look, I mean, every coach has a different coaching style. So from someone from the outside in to critique uh, playing style, strategy, coverages, it's tough because the more that I'm away from the game, the more I notice that there is different strategy that that coaches like to teach that teach their players, whether it's technique or is playbook. So, you know. Me, I'm a, I am a press corner. And I loved it, that nickel position, because I didn't, that became increasingly popular, me coming out of JUCO and going into OU. I didn't know that people could actually make a living playing nickel or being, being that extra corner. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm a hard-nosed press corner. Um, I know there are other strategies out there that people use and my expertise is the secondary so I can't make criticism about positioning as a D lineman or offensive lineman or receivers and running backs all I look at when I'm watching football is pretty much the back four so my criticism for OU is I mean there really isn't because I've been in that position um obviously we can do better. I know that what the expectations are, national championship. Uh, you feel disappointed if you don't make it. You know, I know we we pretty much marked in to win the Big 12 every year, but we won a national championship. So, you know, I, I don't really had too much, too much criticism, man. I, I know it's tough. I know we need to do better. But what it is, or what do we need to do better at? I'm on the outside looking in, so I don't truly know. Man, that's a great point. And, you know, I just, you, you talked about some of the matchups, man. I mean, sometimes, hell, you guys are guard, guarding guys 6'5 or taller. I mean, so, right. you know, it, it's that that is what it is. I want to talk about some of your career at OU, man. Favorite games there? Uh, you know, I know you, uh, maybe favorite bowl games. Let me know, favorite W's. Yeah, it definitely was the Alabama game, Did Sugar Bowl. Yeah, the Sugar Bowl, uh, was that 20, that's 2014 Sugar Bowl. It was f- 2014 season of 2013 type deal. Right, right, right. That was good because obviously we were the underdogs. Um, 
people make the excuse that Alabama didn't come to play, but you know, I think they, you know, it was it was a pretty it was a shooting match. We were going back and forth, and um, yeah, I think that was opportunity that Coach Mike gave me to to do some things to to disrupt some things, and I think it really helped. Um, but everybody played good, man. Ooh, y'all did. Everybody played good. What's the key to beating Alabama? What's the key? Is that the key for everybody to play good? Everybody to play good. Um, For us, I think we were really technicians in the the film room. We saw a lot of things. We, in my opinion, exposed a lot of voids that they got away with playing SEC ball. And when we got that uh, opportunity, I don't think that they were prepared for the tweaks and the little things that we did to to take advantage of what we saw on film. Can you so get obviously? Do you remember any of those? Can you dive into them? I mean, I know hell they had Derrick Henry, they had I believe Yell, they had some guys. Yeldon, uh, uh, Mari Hart Cooper. Um, it was a defense that Mike put in. I forget what the name was, but it was a lot of disguising blitzes dropping back into coverage for the for the back four mm. and a couple of times man uh aj mccarron was the quarterback at that time he was expecting the blitz but i'll go back into into coverage and what he thought he had open he had to hold the ball and maybe striker came on the backside and, and got the sack so it was just a lot of stuff like that that they may have saw on film from what we did in the past but we, we changed a little bit with with all that time that we had uh, preparing for the Sugar Bowl. Man, so it was a lot of stuff like that. And on the offensive side, I don't know what they did, but man, they came out and and ball. Well, they controlled one. They converted. You know, when when they got down to the red zone, um, I can't. Uh, Lacolton Be- uh, Bester. I mean, what a Bester. game! What a game! Shep had a game. TK had a game. Right. Um, I mean, you you guys were able to run the ball. Brennan Clay had a solid game. Uh, the O line really blocked really well, but I mean we still run into this cause, and I mean maybe that was the last time we've seen us play. That was the best game we've played in a while. First of all, since right. maybe Ohio State, and yeah. those two teams. Even though I'll just let me ask you this: Are we getting the? Are we able to do that year in and year out? You know, you've seen us the last two years, and we've struggled with Bama and LSU. Are we? Are we equipped like you guys were? Did they just all of a sudden get way, way better than us? What Was those last two years a sign of what's to come? What do you think? Even when I was there, you can be a phenomenal player. And we've seen, and I've seen phenomenal players. I'm talking, I wouldn't consider them practice players, but some of the things I've seen in practice – and not be able to translate to, to on the field. I guess I gotta I gotta attribute that to not having the team chemistry. It's something that it takes for everything to be firing on all cylinders. Mm. So obviously the, the defense that we've had, we still connect to this day. The chemistry is that's what I would have to put it on. Mm. Connecting and being able to just trust and 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 being I mean almost playing as one. So I don't know I don't know what the locker room is like. And I don't know what you know what it is when they get off the field, how do they interact with each other. But you know, I was there for two years and I made some lifelong friendships. You know, it's people that I reach back for and, and, and help them up if they needed it. Same here with you, man. We brothers in hell. We never even right. played a year a day. We right. kicked it plenty of times. <laughs> yeah. A couple of times. Yeah. Maybe, y'all remember we went up, uh, where did we go? To the, the suites. Casino. Oh, the casino. casino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, I mean, I think that's the, the missing piece. Not to say that they don't have it. But from the outside looking in, you know, I could be anybody on Twitter. It's an outside spectator at this point. Man, it was it was comfort. You know, even even though everything didn't go 
how I planned during my time at OU, I still felt connected when I when I got on that field. That's real. Yeah. Man, that's a few more things. I know I'll let you get back to your beautiful family, but you got to tell me about them, how they're doing. I hope everybody's staying safe. Um, and then just – Oh, go ahead. Yeah, everybody's well. Um, everybody's well, man. Two daughters. Uh, obviously, no school, doing a lot of home learning. Uh, girlfriend, she is um, – she passed the bar. Shortly. I saw that. Congratulations. Right. So Big shortly time. before the pandemic – Got the got the news and couldn't work. I mean, she's barely working now because of the courts, and um, she's working under a judge for um, her first year out. But courts are closed, and we're just starting to uh, reopen here in Philly. I think we just got to the green phase this week coming up, so um, we're going we're going to give it a shot and see if we can keep this infection rate down with this uh, the coronavirus. But everybody's safe, healthy. Can't complain. That's good, man. Uh, I appreciate you, man, all the time. I mean, I feel like, you know, when you were in school and almost 10 years ago, I hate to make you sound old, but when yeah. you were when you were in college almost 10 years ago, shit, it was 20 for me, bro. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> when you were in college, it wasn't really popular to speak out, you know, especially me as a mixed kid. I know people would say, ah, you ain't even fully black. Ah, you ain't this. You ain't that. Well, for me, when I saw Laquan McDonald and Tamir Rice get killed, that to me, I, I felt, I felt, the blackest I've ever felt. I'll put it to you like that. Um, I appreciate your support through all those things, Kaz, because I know, you know, you being at OU and you have a voice with those things. But one, I know you and you take care of a lot of your teammates. You've been involved with Sooners Helping Sooners and all that. And you you care about a lot of people. And again, I, I appreciate you helping me with that stance because, again, I know it wasn't as popular then. And now it's like, oh, maybe we should listen up. Well, you know, there have been people out there that have been saying things for a lot. Um, I, I commented on the Elijah McClain thing the other day. I mean, and I want to get your thoughts just again on everything that's going on, um, especially up in Philly. I, I, I follow a few uh, people up there that are, that are very vocal and very uh, inspirational, but um, I, I just, it's hard, man, when you see somebody who looks like a, a kid that's in one of your seventh grade classes, you know, who wears the same clothes that they do, who is as innocent as that person, and just get killed and not be treated like a human. Those things are hard. Um, what What's your stance on things? What do you What do you feel like is going on in the world? Uh, am I just being a, a, a Am I just complaining? Let me know. Yeah, now you got to know we're on the same page when it, when it comes to this. And I wish we did have someone that could ask the hard questions and ask the opposing questions because I know there's a lot of people out there that just truly don't understand. Um, I mean, I'm at the point where I don't even look at the videos. I just see another name, another hashtag, and, you know, I just say, you know, wow. When is it going to end? And nothing that has been done in response is unjust. Everything has been called for, from the peaceful riots to the violent riots Real. to the bringing down of the statues to the changing um of names titles, of buildings yeah of buildings none of that in my opinion is uncalled for when you when you talk about a culture a community that has been oppressed for so long where we feel that we've tried everything to only be able to get a response when we mm. do the things that we that we've done mm. now given it's hard to get a community that has a system in place for division to come together but when we when these events occur you want to see some unity and what comes from that unity is what we've you know what we saw so far in 2020 so anything that's produced from us and our unity, I'm all for it. Because that's the only way that we're going to get attention and some type of change. Man, that's real. Man, that's real. I appreciate you coming on, brother. And, and like I said, man, I just, to comment on your point, I, I want people to think of, I know there's been a lot of people thinking, um, nobody wants to, uh, 
from the last pod, I, I didn't really get to elaborate on a lot of my feelings, but you know, nobody wants to see buildings burn down, right. but I would be, I can't start these. I'm going to start this conversation again with Elijah McClain. Okay. If that's one of my students who I know was one of my best students in class, who was a friendly soul, whose mother is doing everything she can to raise him and he gets killed unjust. Am I supposed to be mad at that mother for burning something? No, in my opinion, I'm supposed to be grieving with that mother. You know, I'm supposed to be, and 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 I said it, man, I'm tired of crying over kids that I don't know because they remind me of kids that I do know. I'm tired of it. Yeah. That, that, that shit hurts. It, it hurts when you can sit there and say, that looks exactly like such and such. That, that he acts just like such and such. He, he He's not typical like such and such. And, and and it's just it's hard, man. And it's yeah, you said something the other day, Kaz, and you're right. It's not my job to educate people. It's not our job to educate people. The, right. We sh- we shouldn't have to refer books and podcasts, and you you shouldn't have to do your podcast from the suburbs, and you shouldn't have to just realize and show your kids an Elmo video. You should have been proactive on these things, but yeah. unfortunately, you know, people like to cherry pick. And we start talking about all these amendments, and I'm asking, well, what's the 13th, 14th, 15th? Let's talk about that one. Well, no, you want to only want to talk about first, second, and third, and fourth. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I get it. But, you know, for my people, for my grandpa's grandfather, those 13th, 14th, and 15th meant a lot. And it didn't happen overnight. And and again, you just you mentioned it with just with our people being oppressed like that, man. I I, I commend you, dude. I commend you for using your platform to stand with the people. Um, I commend you for your thoughts today. Um, I try to stay neutral as neutral as I can on the, on this show and give everybody the, give everybody the just you know but but my two cents are that because is you know it and you've been and thank you for that you showed up to my pro days um, with oh, yeah. with the kids and she came to my gym and you heard me Shit, I'm telling kids about these things before they get there I mean we telling right. kids in high school this is what you're dealing with you go to a frat party you need to be ready to be told no and go home. You deal with uh, stu- athletic uh, academics; they're gonna tell you. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, so I appreciate you investing in it, man. You you've done so many so many good things for your teammates, for the community here, and I'm sure you're just gonna do great things up there in Philly, man. Yeah, anything anything that I can do, man. Like I said, when I was at OU, unbelievable bonds. Mm. I mean, I went to weddings. You know, I've been around <laughs> people people's kids, man. It's and it's it's just great to see people grow and back to the the social unrest it's look it doesn't have to be political i don't take it as political i just want to stand for what's right and with some things that i've experienced coming from my community i do believe that i'm an exception to be able to have made it out of my community but when i speak out it's for the people that are in my community Mm -hmm. that didn't make it that's real so anyone that's been truly educated will understand what stance and what side of history that they want to be on. And hopefully we can see some changes. I use it. Out. I use the football analogy. You know, when people start t- uh, talking about paying players and things like that, you were at OU for a year. You don't realize wh- what that person went through for a year. That person had had the chance to have their scholarship taken 24 times a day <laughs> in that year. Yeah. You know, I'm sure you saw it, guys. There's not every scholarship that gets taken is just. I mean, it, there's cats sent home just because. What happened to him? I don't know. Uh, his stuff's it's gone. Still, it's still some stories that I don't right. know. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, but I use that example. I mean, you know, we need a safety net for our people. We need some security for our people, man. I'm I'm, I'm so thankful you came on the pod. Uh, oh, real quick. Do you can I get some money advice? Dog? I, I got I got some change where I need to throw it uh, because, you know, where I've been throwing it, uh, they don't give it back. If you know what I mean. So, no, I'm right. just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, I was still scratching my head on that. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that, okay? <laughs> but, um, yeah, and this, this is for anybody, man. This is a, um, with everything that's going on with the uh, pandemic and the uh, social unrest, and we're only halfway through 2020. Who knows what the other half mm. of 2020 would bring? Um, this is not an environment to take financial matters into your own hand. And mm. I would encourage a lot of people to seek professional advice. 
people who have studied the market, people who know what's going to happen, people who have been through these things, people who understand what needs what you're you're beginning, where you're at now, where you're going. Uh, No, you're absolutely right. I mean, you don't you don't go to. Yeah, shoot. You're right. So uh, whenever I whenever I do make this decision, you'd be expecting a phone call. Let me know what that rate's hitting for. And I got you. Oh, yeah. But I mean, questions and a lot of people associate advice you know like i'm an attorney like i'm gonna charge you by the the minute no if you have a question seek advice i'm not nickel and diming anyone but it's real get get i want to see you benefit from the advice and it, it does